Hello and welcome to Represent NYC election coverage from Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I'm Ben Max, your host and the executive editor of Gotham Gazette. Today, we're pleased to bring you a debate in the general election for City Council District 1. The district includes much of lower Manhattan, including Chinatown, Battery Park, the Financial District, parts of the Lower East Side, NoHo, SoHo, the South Street, Seaport, and more, as well as Governor's Island. I will soon introduce you to the three candidates who will be on the general election ballot and are joining us here for this debate. Voting in this race and the others in the general election of 2021 will be done through absentee balloting, the early voting period of October 23rd through October 31st, and election day is Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. Along with city council, also on the ballot this fall are contests for borough president Manhattan District Attorney, Controller, Public Advocate, Mayor, and others. There will also be five yes or no ballot questions on constitutional amendments that we'll discuss in a separate show and you should be ready to vote on. So today we're focused on the City Council and who will be the next representative from District 1, which has been represented by City Council Member Margaret Chin for more than a decade. Council Member Chin was unable to seek re-election due to term limits this year. So City Council member is a position that includes key responsibilities and powers around constituent services, local problem solving, legislating, budgeting, making land use decisions, and more. With me today to explain their visions for being the next City Council member from District 1 are the three candidates. Christopher Marte is the Democratic nominee for City Council in District 1. Jackie Toberoff is the Republican candidate for City Council in District 1 and Maud Marin is on the ballot line for independent New York in the general election. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. So let's get right into this debate. We're gonna start with one minute opening statements in just a moment. As we go around the debate in future rounds, you'll have about a minute and a half to answer each question from me. I might ask you some follow-up questions, so be ready for those. And if somebody criticizes you or disagrees with you, I'll do my best to give you a chance to respond. We'll move along in our 28 minute debate here until closing statements of one minute each at the end. If you hear me say a gentle thank you, that means wrap it up. And then the next time I'll jump right in to move things along. All right, so we're gonna alternate who starts each round, but we'll go in the same order to keep it simple. Ms. Marin, you're gonna start with opening statements. You have one minute. Thank you, Ben, I'm happy to be here. Hello everyone, my name is Maud Marin and I'm an independent candidate for City Council in District 1 Lower Manhattan. I'm a mom of four public school students. I'm a wife to my husband Juan Pablo, who's an immigrant to our great city. I'm a public defender with over two decades of experience working in our criminal justice system and I am an education advocate. As an independent, I am the common sense candidate who will fight for solutions to public safety, education, and business recovery. As an independent, I will be uniquely situated to listen to everyone. We don't need more extreme polarization in our city or in our country. We need to move forward. If elected, I will speak for everyone that wants to join the fight for a better New York City and a better downtown. For more information about me, please visit maudmarin.nyc. Thank you. Christopher Marte. Thank you, MN, for hosting this debate. And thank you, Max, for moderating it. Uh, my name is Christopher Marte, and I'm the Democratic nominee for City Council. I was born and raised in the district, went to local public schools, and I've been organizing in my community for the past eight years against massive overdevelopment and displacement. We won the Democratic primary because of the coalition we built. From Chinatown to Lower East Side to Battery Park City, we won because we were on the front lines of local issues. Our supporters range from community activists to people who didn't know what the City Council was until we knocked on their door. I'm excited to have the opportunity to lead this district out of this pandemic and look forward to discussing my platform throughout this debate. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie Toberoff. Thank you, Ben. My name is Jackie Toberoff, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm a mother of two children born and raised in Manhattan and I've never run for political office before. What's compelled me to run is the outrage I feel just like the rest of the people in District 1, and it's really, quite frankly, from failed Democrat policies. It's not even debatable anymore. Um, whether it's defunding NYPD and bail reform, having a direct correlation on the crime spike, to city council voting to defund police by a billion dollars and dismantling the homeless division, we have homeless encampments everywhere. It's a quality of life issue. It's a safety issue. Uh, it affects myself, my two children, 
and it makes me nervous. And finally, as a mom of two, I'm really concerned about the broken education system, whether it's the fact that schools have been closed for a year and a half or the departure from core curriculum and obsession over CRT. Um, all of this, again, is correlated to failed Democrat policies. Okay, thank you. We're, we're gonna keep it with you actually, Ms. Tobaroff, for this next question. So um, if you could explain to people some of your qualifications to become a city council member, some of your uh, resume, and as a second part of the same question, what would be your top priorities? You got at this a little bit and as did other candidates here in your opening statements, but what are your qualifications to become a city council member and what would your most top priorities be if elected? Go ahead. Uh, my qualifications are I'm CEO of my household. I'm a divorce mom. I'm a logistics specialist. I am a budget expert. Uh, I'm an accountant, a chef, uh, an entertainment guru. I work. Um, I run a family and I have to make decisions every single day, economic decisions um, that impact my family, realizing that we cannot afford that because if we buy that, we go broke. Um, I make safety decisions. Every single day I ride the subway, I commute to school with my kids, uh, and there's an incident every single day on the subway. So again, I'm really focused, like the majority of people in this, this district, crime is the number one issue. And I'd say the second issue is really the school situation. I'm well versed in both of those issues and I have great solutions. Thank you. Ms. Marin, uh, in, in part of your answer, if you could, uh, you ran in the Democratic primary, you're now running in the general election. Mr. Marte was obviously successful in that primary. Can you explain a little bit your decision to keep going with an independent campaign as part of your answer here uh, at the beginning and then talk a little bit about uh, your qualifications and top priorities, please? Sure, I think my decision to run um, in the general is probably very similar to Chris's decision to run in the general. Um, four years ago when he lost the Democratic primary to Margaret Chin. Um, when you have a vision that you think is really important for your community and for your district, um, you want to give all of the people in your district the chance to vote on it. And because we have closed primaries, something Andrew Yang has recently been in the news talking about, um, our elected officials are often chosen by people of only one party. I wanna listen to everybody, what, regardless of the party that you're registered for, um, and make sure that everybody's voice is heard in the conversation about the important decisions we have to make for our district going forward. Okay, thank you. And on to qualifications and top priorities, please. Sure. Yeah. Um, look, two of the biggest issues that we have to discuss um, as a city and as a, a, a district are issues around our criminal justice system and issues around our education. Criminal justice and education take up an enormous part of the budget of our city. Um, and I'm an expert in both, right? I have worked as a public defender for years. I have delivered results for the individual clients and, and, and their families that I have represented. Um, I am an, a successful trial lawyer and I know and understand with great detail how the criminal justice system works and how it doesn't work. I understand where the fixes need to be and what we need to maintain and what we need to continue to do. With regard to education, as I said, I'm a mom of four kids in the public school system, but I've also been elected and reelected repeatedly to leadership positions um, in the school district and in my children's schools. I secured a $3.6 million integration grant for our district with a thoughtful um, integration proposal that both emphasized academics and met integration needs and demands. I Thank created you. the first dual language program in our district for pre-K kids, so I've delivered results. Thank you. Mr. Marte, your background qualifications and top priorities. Go ahead. Yeah, Mark qualification is that I've been a community organizer around the biggest issues in our district, whether it's the four luxury towers that they want to build in the Two Bridges neighborhood, which is going to cause massive displacement, the Soho Noho rezoning, the Seaport rezoning, saving precious green space in our community. I've been there working with community activists, with neighbors, making sure they have a voice heard in this process. The biggest influence that a council member has is over land use. And we ran on a land use platform in the primary and won because people understand the power and the influence it can have to their every single day life. Also in the city council, you have to manage your budget. Uh, previously, I worked at IBM's retirement fund where I managed a $1.2 billion budget. So I had to make tough decisions, but decisions that were both short-term and long-term. And I'm ready to do that both on a citywide level 
and with my own discretionary funds. And finally, we have to make sure that we have great constituent services in our district. Um, as state committee person now, I get constituent emails every single day talking about traffic, sanitation, climate change. And we've been working on them every single day. And we, can, we want to continue to deliver these results that we've been doing and why people voted for us in June 22nd for the next four years. And that's why I wanna be an ex-council member. Thank you. All right, Ms. Marin, let's start with you again this round. Let's talk about some of the solutions here. You've each identified some of your top priorities. There's some overlap, there's some differences, that's great. I'm sure you, you all agree on, on probably, you know, the, the 10, 20 issues that you need to address as a city council member, um, uh, but maybe not how to address them, of course. So let's talk about solutions to some of the issues that you brought up, what you would pursue as a city council member, especially Ms. Marin, you discussed criminal justice, education. What would you be either introducing legislation on, advocating for, trying to change city budget priorities, and so on as a city council member to address those couple of issues you mentioned. Uh, go ahead. So look, New York City residents deserve to be safe, right? In our streets, in our subways, everywhere. Chris Marte has repeatedly called to defund the police by a billion dollars. He is wrong. Eric Adams is right. I agree with Eric Adams, right? He says it's about the justice we deserve and the safety we need. New Yorkers should not be forced to choose between the two. Of course, we need to hold the police responsible for abuse and misconduct, but at the same time, we need a well-trained, very diverse police force. I'll give you an example. Chris Marte wants to get rid of school safety agents. Eric Adams wants to promote school safety agents. I agree with him, and the rationale, the policy rationale is really smart. We can help keep our kids safe in school, but at the same time, diversify the NYPD. We need to uh, create a more diverse NYPD. It's already majority minority, but we can do even better and we can do better with leadership um, and promoting um, school safety agents and acknowledging the important work that they do um, is, is a very smart policy. And, and I agree with Eric Adams about that. So in terms of criminal justice, your, your main priorities are keeping the NYPD funded as is, not, not reducing NYPD funding, keeping school safety agents as part of the NYPD in schools, but continuing to do some of the diversification efforts and, and other things you mentioned, but those are your, those are your top priorities on, on criminal justice and, and public safety? No, Ben, my top priority is keeping people safe and you have to implement policy decisions to do that. Sure, so in terms of your policy uh, proposals to do that, I, did I, I recap your, your two points there, right? Yes, we should absolutely fund the NYPD and demand that they are a well-run, well-trained um, police force and school safety agent promotion is an example of one of the things that we can do. There are many others. Okay, Chris Marte, uh, you're up on some of the solutions you'd pursue uh, as a city council member. Again, uh, legislatively, budgetarily, whatever it may be, advocating at different levels of government. But of course, uh, Ms. Marin mentioned you a couple of times related to your views on public safety. So if you want to address those first before going into some of the other issues you've already mentioned around development uh, and so on, go ahead. I think my biggest priority and the number one issue that we ran on is passing community-based rezoning policies like the Chinatown Working Group. Soho and Chinatown aren't protected by overdevelopment and greedy landlords. We see the results with one Manhattan square. We have a 90 story tower right behind public housing and section eight housing. This Soho Noho rezoning is gonna do the same thing, but in Chinatown on the Northern borderline of Canal Street, we have to make sure we need a council member that's willing to talk to residents, develop a plan that's community based that offers an alternative to our city planning commission. And that's gonna represent the people of this district. Um, I've been working with community activists to develop some of these plans and we're ready to do that on day one. When you, when you, Think about some of these plans, you propose some of them, you're drafting them. Inevitably, often what comes back from city planning, from a mayoral administration, are that these community-driven uh, plans are unrealistic, that the, that the financing just won't work, uh, that the market forces need to be harnessed in a different way. How would you, as a council member, craft these community plans work with the mayoral administration to get to some kind of agreement, some kind of compromise where uh, the district or the area within the district that you're talking about doesn't wind up just staying the same and you know gentrification is happening, uh, prices are rising and, and nothing happens. 
Yeah. And so when you look at the Chinatown Working Group Plan in itself, it actually mimics the current East Village zoning policy. So we're not setting a precedent. We're not doing something that's brand new. And that was done under the Bloomberg administration. And so it's educating both new elected officials from the mayor's administration uh, to community activists to say, we just want the same protection that the East Village has, but for Chinatown and the Lower East Side. And so it's nothing new. You just need a council member that's going to work with city planning, work with the mayor administration and, and deliver for the community. And quickly, do you want to respond to what Ms. Marin said about your stances on uh, reducing NYPD funding uh, and other public safety issues? No. Okay. Ms. Tobaroff, your solutions, your top priorities, you said on some of the issues you mentioned, you have ideas. So let's hear them. So I'm in agreement with Maude. I think the number one issue is really crime. And unless you tackle crime, nothing else really matters. Um, you have to support and refund the NYPD. They have been completely hindered. And it's not only enough to support and refund the NYPD, you have to have people not only making arrests, but a DA that prosecutes. Because unless criminals are prosecuted, uh, it doesn't matter about the arrests. And no one's going to want to come to New York to stay in New York with the crime skyrocketing as it currently is. It's just not safe here. And what I would do also, uh, I absolutely would agree to the safety agents in schools. Right now you've seen, there's a report that just came out. They're firing unvaccinated teachers. They're hiring 3,700 substitute teachers. Uh, officials have already said there's going to be a crisis of epic proportions. There won't be enough teachers and there won't be enough safety agents. This poses a tremendous problem in schools uh, to families. And not only that, it's costing taxpayers an additional $1,850,000 squandered, again, as they fire teachers, hire substitutes, bribe them $50 a day for a minimum of 10 days. Uh, this is economic warfare. It makes absolutely no sense. They are going to apply this model to other organizations uh, that don't, uh, that where people do not want to get vaccinated, whether it's the hospitals, NYPD, um, fire department, that's not sustainable. So the first thing absolutely is safety. We have to support, refund the NYPD. Yeah, and quickly, Mr. Tobrov, what's your impression as to how policing has changed or been hindered? Um, what do you see as the difference in terms of on the ground policing in your district, the district you hope to represent? What has been the, the shift in policing that you think has happened as a result of, of the reductions in the NYPD budget? Firstly, I would say that the police majority is minority and they are monitored to the gills. The problem is you have some social justice warrior that's going to take a photo of them. You have qualified immunity that's been stripped. And what's happening now is they're absolutely handcuffed. They don't want to make arrests and we feel it. There is a crime spike. It's palpable. Everyone knows it. It's the number one issue. So let's start with Mr. Marte this time. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit more about uh, housing in the district and, and development. When you look at the district and uh, the issues around housing affordability, when you would try to advance solutions, you talked about community-based rezonings. This has obviously been the issue you focused on most in this discussion and in your campaign. So we're asking to hear a little bit more from you here and then from the other candidates to focus now in on this issue of housing and housing affordability and development in the district. But Mr. Marte, perhaps you can talk a little bit more about uh, the details of your vision to create more affordable housing in the district and alleviate some of the pressures on people uh, that might be pushed out. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, so going back to what I originally said about passing these community-based zoning policy is to limit speculation, right? That's what's driving the cost of rent, both for residential and commercial. Um, secondly, we have opportunities to build affordable housing in our district. Right now, there's a push to make World Trade Center number five 100% affordable. Uh, we just got the green light from the Biden, Biden administration to convert a federal parking lot on 2 Howard Street to 100% affordable housing unit. And in other developments like Grand Street Guild, we're going to build 300 units of affordable housing. Uh, right across the street from that, we're going to build a 100% senior affordable housing. So we have a lot of momentum in building new stock of affordability for this community that's going to bring also great equity, which is needed in our community. And I want to be a council person that not only finishes off these projects, but start looking at other sites or whether it's new sites or conversion from office space to deeply affordable residential units um, is something that we look forward to tackling. Mr. Marte, just quickly, um, you know, 
a lot of people may agree with a lot of the things you say on, on development and issues of overdevelopment and the need for more affordable housing and, and some of the specifics that you just laid out. But when they look at your position on uh, the Soho rezoning, they say, boy, if he can't get behind, you know, up zoning in a, in a wealthier, whiter neighborhood of the city to bring in more housing, including affordable housing, is there really, you know, sort of any anything that he will support? What, how do you respond to, to some of that criticism around opposition to the Soho plan? I think when you actually look at the plan and read the plan, you're going to realize that it's not going to build any affordable housing. So, for example, if you look at the empty lots down the north side of Canal Street, the current FAR ratio for commercial and residential use incentivizes commercial use. And we're talking about Soho and NoHo, which flagship, which five Fortune 500 company is not going to want their flagship store there? And which landlord would rather have one commercial tenant than dealing with thousands of, of residential tenants? And so I think the current plan incentivizes commercial use, which we have seen already in that neighborhood. So it won't be built any affordable housing. And also there's a loophole if you read the environmental impact statement that says developers, if they can show financial hardship, they don't have to commit to the MIH program and they get the FAR that they want. So I think it's looking at the details and making sure that this administration is held accountable uh, because it sounds all good on Twitter, but when you actually look at the plan, when you go to these community board hearings and city planning hearings, that's when you realize the flaws of the plan. Uh, Ms. Tobruff, how would you approach housing affordability and development in the district and as a city council member, your significant power to influence land use decisions? So you cannot be pro-affordable housing and anti-real estate developer. They're mutually, they, they work together. Um, what I would do is I would bring in the developers and realize that these developers actually provide all of these services that beautify the neighborhoods. They're responsible for picking up the trash. They provide all of this revenue. We would have to work with developers while at the same time maintaining this historical uh, district and these historical buildings, whether you look at Chinatown um, or the Lower East Side or Soho, these have intrinsic value. These are historical areas that are tourist attractions. You want to maintain them. You want to update them. There's asbestos, there's lead poisoning. Um, they're run down. And rather than have them be shells, there are ways to convert them and work with the developers. Thank you. Ms. Marin, how would you approach these matters uh, as a city council member? Right. I mean, look, I think what you see is when, um, you know, Mr. Marte talks a lot about um, activist led um, planning, um, as if all of the district planning people who have worked in our city government for years have nothing to offer. And it's only activists on the ground who know how to um, move forward and create affordable housing. <clears throat> but the reality is, is if you look at where we have affordable housing in our district now, you have Independence Plaza, you have Confucius Plaza, you have these large developments that were built that if someone tried to propose them now, Chris Marte would be out there, um, you know, protesting and uh, marching and shouting against them because that's the pattern is whenever something's proposed, whether it's senior housing that's proposed by Margaret Chin or any housing development in the Lower East Side, um, Christopher Marte has been opposed to it. It's only activist plans that, as Ben, you pointed out, many people have noted are seriously unrealistic in terms of the financials um, and what they have to offer for, for our district. We do need to have more development and Soho is a neighborhood that could have um, zoning that's more in alignment with reality. Let me give you an example. Christopher mentioned um, near Canal Street. Near Canal Street is where they wanna build one of the largest homeless shelters in our city. If we had zoning that made that property commercially viable, it would have already been developed as a commercial property. It's not commercially viable under our current zoning, but it is viable under Bill de Blasio's deeply corrupt homeless shelter program because someone can go in there and make money by jamming 12 men into a room in an unsafe congregate homeless shelter, but a developer can't make money using it as a commercial real estate where you could put a pediatrician's office or some other benefit to our community. My kids, pediatrician, Soho Pediatrics closed because the commercial rent hikes were so high that a viable pediatric process, you know, office couldn't be run in Soho because of the way that the Bill de Blasio zoning and the Bill de Blasio commercial rent hikes have combined to make it almost impossible. 
Mr. Marte, we are running low on time, but would you like to respond to any of uh, what Ms. Marin just said? Yes, uh, I just proposed more than five different sites throughout this district where we can build new affordable housing that I support 100%. And I've been to rallies, I've been to community board testifying why we need them. And so I think her statement was incorrect. And also I've never seen either of these candidates at those meetings advocating for affordable housing. Let's um, unfortunately put a pin in that. We are gonna get to closing statements in just a minute. I know many issues, obviously we couldn't touch on in just 28 minutes here, but I'm, I'm glad everyone's given uh, voters and viewers here a chance at some insights into what you stand for and what you prioritize. I want everybody to just take 30 seconds before we go to closing statements. I know this is not enough time to really do this issue justice, but it's very important for the next city council. The plan is moving ahead towards building a new jail in lower Manhattan. If you become the next city council member in brief, what would you do to try to influence where that plan is heading, Mr. Marte? Um, I'm against the Chinatown jail. I've been one of the leading organizers against it from the very beginning. Um, I think this city doesn't know how to go jails as we've seen, and they don't actually address the humane crisis that's happening in jails throughout this city. Scrap the plan or alter it? Uh, scrap the plan. Ms. Toberoff. Yeah, we have a jail. It's called Rikers Island, and it should be filled, especially amidst a, a crime spike. I am against putting a jail in a residential area. I would veto it. And Ms. Marin. You know, we have to acknowledge that what's going on at Rikers Island right now um, is a travesty. We have a real problem in um, keeping our corrections guards on, on the job, and we have major um, concerns about how people are being treated. You don't fix any of those concerns by changing the zip code of a jail. I absolutely would not build a residential jail downtown, but we need to have a serious talk about how to fix Rikers Island and how to build compassionate 21st century jails. Mr. Marte is on record very clearly saying he wants to close down all of Rikers Island and not build borough-based jails. Well, where are we going to incarcerate the roughly 6,000 people who are currently on Rikers Island while our crime rate is going up? That's a question that he has never answered. Respond to that if you'd like to as part of his closing statement. We're going into one minute closing statements here. Ms. Tobaroff, you're going to start us off. All right. So this is a really winnable race. The election, as you said, is November 2nd. If you are anti the crime spike, anti the departure of core curriculum, anti CRT, uh, anti homeless encampments on your block, uh, there's really only one option. It's me. I'm the stand between all of these failed Democrat policies. And again, I'm really coming from a place of having two children, uh, entering, entering this, going out onto these streets. It is dangerous. We all know the problems. We see it every day and it all comes from failed Democrat policies. Thank you, Ms. Marin. Thank you, Ben, and thank you everyone uh, for listening to this debate. There's a real choice for downtown New York. I am the candidate who will deliver common sense solutions for public safety, education, and business recovery. We need a candidate downtown who will put a stop to disastrous congregate homeless shelters. We need to ensure a well-trained, effective, fully funded police department. We need school safety agents in our schools and excellent schools. We need tourism back and we need an economy that can lift up all New Yorkers. We must stop the borough-based jail plan and create a viable, compassionate jail system that's based in the reality of crime prevention and not the fantasy of decarceration. I'm running as an independent, and I will listen to everyone. And I ask for your vote on November 2nd. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Marte, over to you. Uh, thank you, Ben, for hosting this debate. And thank you for the voters for voting for me as a Democratic nominee. We haven't stopped working. Over the summer, we've tackled some of our biggest issues, whether it's Soho, Noho rezoning, 250 Water Street, saving precious green space like Rockefeller Park and Elizabeth Street Garden. And we're gonna continue to do that work as your next council member. We're excited about the opportunity. We wanna engage as many people into this process. And I ask for your vote on November 2nd so we can work together and change this district. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you all three candidates, Jackie Toberoff, the Republican nominee, Christopher Marte, the Democratic nominee, and Maude Marin, who's running on the independent New York ballot line. This is a debate in City Council District 1. Thank you all for your participation.
Thank you for watching Represent NYC election coverage. I hope this debate was helpful to you as you make your decisions when it's time to vote this fall. Key decisions are coming up for all of us for this office and many more on the ballot. I do hope you decide to vote. I'm Ben Max. See you next time.